Welcome to another Mr. James Accounting Tutorial. Today I will be covering Accounting Unit 1, Paper 2, Module 1 of 2014. We begin with question 1A. We have before us we have before us Douglas Spencer reported the following amounts in the shareholders equity section of a December 21st statement of financial affairs we are given some preference shares common shares and the share premium or capital in excess of power retained earnings and we are told that ds limited took part in the following transactions concerning shareholders equity first one paid the amount the annual dividend on the preferred shares and a two dollar dividend on the common shares these dividends have been declared at 28 december 2013 so they were declared the year before and now they are being paid so we should they should have been in a dividend payable account okay so let's see Prepared journal entries to record the transactions. Narratives are not required. We look at the workings first. The preference share dividend 200,000 by 10%. 10% up here. 200,000. Uh, we get 20,000. The common shares we have 2,000 issued and at $2 a share per dividend we will get. 4,000 in dividend giving us a total of 24,000 when we do the journal entry we can do it in total 24,000 or we can do it separate okay the journal entry would be dividend payable 24,000 cash 24,000 okay it's payable you must have the word payable here to get the mark when you declare a dividend you put it in a payable account until you pay it or when you pay it you debit the dividend payable account okay the next transaction is you 500 preference shares at 105 the workings would be 105 by 500 equal 52,500 okay this does not have any power value so we cannot calculate any premium or discount on it so your journal entry would be debit cash 52,500 and credit preference shares with 52,500 the next transaction we receive equipment with a market value of 77,600 for 7,500 common shares okay the working for that the common shares is a hundred dollars the power value here is a hundred dollars and we multiply by 7,500 so we get 750,000 dollars we are paying $750,000 for equipment worth $77,600. So it means we have a discount of $672,400 we are given to our new shareholders. Okay, so the journal entry would be to debit equipment which we are buying with 72,600 credit the discount on shares sorry debit the discount on shares with 672,400 and credit common shares with 750,000 
Okay, now you have to be careful you don't mistake this discount for a premium. The last one is appropriated retained earnings for plant expansion 200,000. Okay, so this is what it is it's for plant expansion. You are not buying the plant, you are just appropriating the retained earnings. So you debit retained earnings, so take it out of there and you put it in a plant replacement reserve of 200,000. Notice you have to have the word reserve here. If you just have plant replacement, you will not get the mark because plant replacement with the could that could mean you have bought a fixed asset already. Part B the National Gas Corporation sold 5,000 shares of Mango Pulp Company on 27th of March 2013 for $17.50 per share, incurring 1,590 in brokerage commission. The shares has originally been bought for $28.00. Prepare the journal entry to record the sale of the shares. Okay, so we have here some shares being sold at a loss and they're incurring a brokerage free of 1590 which will increase the loss. Right? Prepare the journal entry to record the shares. First, we do the workings. Workings so of for the cash, the cash would be seventeen fifty multiplied by the five thousand, right? And then you're going to pay fifteen ninety from it. So that uh, the cash you're going to receive on the transaction should be eighty five thousand nine hundred and ten. Okay. Next, we have to work out the investment in mango pulp. Now, to do that, you need to know about investments. The brokerage fees is considered part of the cost of the investment. So when you pay this, you will, in fact, debit the investment in Mango Pulp Company with another $1,590. Okay, so the original 28 per share would you would add on fifteen ninety three. So we got twenty eight dollars by five thousand shares could give us around forty thousand. Uh, we add one thousand five hundred and ninety brokerage commission to it. We'll get hundred and forty one thousand five hundred and ninety dollars. Okay. And last we need to work out how much the loss is the loss on the disposal of the investment. The cost of the investment from here we get around forty one thousand five hundred and ninety less the proceeds from the sale of eighty five thousand nine hundred and ten. We got calculated that up here and we get fifty five thousand six hundred and eighty dollars. Okay, so our journal entry, this is your answer here, should be debit cash and bank. With 85,910, that's how much we collected for the thing there. Uh, credit the investment in Mango Pulp with 141,590. This will remove it from the books. And we have a loss on disposal in the balancing figure here for 5680, which we had calculated over here. Part C. Give two reasons why it is necessary to develop IFRS for SMEs, for marks, and there are several Institute of Chartered Accountants in the Caribbean whose main function is to ensure that their members adopt and implement the international accounting standards 
IAS, IFRS, or SMEs. Name one such institute for one mark. Okay, we look at the first part. It was necessary to develop IFRS for small and medium enterprises because the IAS themselves, the international accounting standards, were very bulky and some of them were irrelevant to the small and medium sized enterprises. Okay, and secondly, because implementation of an entire international accounting standard can be too costly for an SME in relation to its benefits, all right? So it didn't make sense implementing a full IES. Okay, the second part, we have three Institute of Chartered Accountants here. They only ask for one, so you can choose, make a choice. Institute of Chartered Accountants of Trinidad and Tobago, ICAT, Institute of Chartered Accountants of Jamaica, ICAJ, and ICAB, Institute of Chartered Accountants of Barbuda. Okay, the owner of McIntyre Enterprises is in the process of reviewing the procedures and practices that exist in his organization. And he has discovered the following situation. And they are numbered one to six. And we are asked for each of the situations outlined above and using the format provided in table one as an insert. Identify the internal control that is being violated and suggest one corrective measures that could be employed and give your reason. Okay, 10 marks. Situation one has been completed for you as an example. Okay, we have the answer over on the side here. We'll go through them one by one. The store clerk hangs the key to the storeroom on a nail in front of his door. Then he goes for lunch. Okay. What control is being violated there? The physical, the physical control, right? The hanging of a key. The key is a physical thing, so it's a physical control. And the corrective measure, the key should be handed to an authorized person when the storeroom clerk goes for lunch. Okay? And the reason, the person who holds the key to the storeroom can be held responsible for any intrusion or losses. Secondly, the purchasing manager is also responsible for receiving goods and maintaining the records of the goods received. The internal control that is violated there is segregation of duties. The corrective measure is to separate the person receiving goods from the person maintaining the records of the goods received. Okay. You must separate the, the recording from the custody of the asset, right? It is easy, the reason is it is easy to falsify record and misappropriate asset if these two duties are performed by the same person. Then you have the company checks are not pre-numbered and the internal control that is violated is the documentation procedures right the corrective measure is to have your checks pre-numbered so the reason is so that you can account for all your checks right if your checks have numbered and they go in sequential order you will know when one is missing and if you have accounted for all if you have no numbers on the checks you cannot tell whether a check is missing. Two cashers use the same cash register. Establishment of responsibility. That is the control that is violated. We should designate one cashier to be responsible for a cash register. 
only one person has to explain any difference in cash. That's the reason. Number five, paid invoices are stored in the accountant's unlocked desk drawers. Okay, notice it is unlocked. He doesn't lock his drawer. Again, you have physical controls. There's a physical desk with a physical lock in it that he could easily lock. All right. Uh, you should not have them there in the first place too. So have filing cabinets for storing accounting documents. All right, and you do that so you can improve reliability of your accounting records. Okay, if everybody can just pass and pick up accounting records and interfere with them, then the reliability of your accounting records would be affected. Number six, the cashier checks off the day's receipts and makes the bank lodgement. Again, we have the same segregation of duties, one person doing two things, and the control is being violated. Different persons should be assigned the task of checking receipts and banking. Only one person has to explain any difference between receipts and banking. Okay. So that brings us to the end of this presentation. Hope it was helpful.